I would analogize it to a continent. So imagine a continent, and in one country in the continent you have iPaaS, you know, integrated student advising. On another you have uh, high impact experiences like study abroad, research experiences, things like that. You have course experiences, you have athletic experiences, you have a whole conglomerate of all these sort of countries or provinces in this continent. Now what makes one student successful will be that they found resonance or help in, say, the IPASS area. Say they were struggling and they were able to reach out. Someone's reach, reached out to them and mentored them or got them some uh, initial uh, additional resources that they needed. And so that got them across the finish line, wherever that finish line for them might have been. Or it might have been a wonderful course experience that there was an inspirational professor who inspired them to go down this particular track. Or it might be an athletic experience, or it might be that study abroad experience, or it might be a conglomerate of those things that constitute success for each individual student and learner as they progress through the institution. So it's very, very difficult if looking at it that way to say, well, it's always this thing, or it's this thing, and this thing, and it's always equally valid for all the learners. So I would think student success is at least as diverse as there are learners. So I think they're going to be looking for ways of customizing the fit to them so that it really meets their needs more directly. And I think that's the challenge for institutions right now, is think how can we utilize things like analytics, big data, new advances in technologies, uh, this notion of a next generation digital learning environment that we've been talking about a lot. Bringing all those forces to bear, so to speak, so that the student has a chance to experience that, but also that the institution has the capacity to deliver that experience to the student. I'm very encouraged in the initial fleet of IPASS schools as they go forward. And I'm really hoping, and it looks, I think the prospects are good, that this innovation will diffuse to the point where it will start to become, in five years from now, as you were asking, a fairly standard part of the periphery or the landscape of how the institution supports its students. The, the early indications from my listening to the people who are actually trying to implement these systems is that it's a phenomenally important aspect of what the institutions can do to help their students experience success or have a sense of success in their academic lives at an institution. Because it is this con confluence point of data and analysis and then interventions that I think are really important. And when that's integrated together and therefore can be much more focus on what's going on with the individual student. So it's not any longer a matter of Johnny didn't uh, turn in his, his uh, paper on time. It's now that we know that maybe something went on in his family. Maybe it's that you know he's a first to college student and something else happened for him or things like this. So that when you go to intervene, your, intervenes, your interventions are much more focused and appropriate to that student's circumstances. <music> So ELI every year surveys the community in a survey we call the, the key issues in teaching and learning in order to identify precisely that. What are the key things that people think are the real challenges and opportunities right now in higher ed teaching and learning? So this year when we conducted it, we also asked the res res respondents to indicate what type of institution they were from, master's, research, baccalaureate, or two-year institution. And so when you get the, the roster of the top five, you say, how did these figure in these individual silos of, of institutional types? You discover that there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that we have in common. Everyone, they're all, we're all, no matter what the institutional type is, we're all very interested in academic transformation. We're all very concerned and interested in faculty development. There is a new uh, interest in accessibility and the universal design for learning. There's, and again, across all these categories, there is a renewed interest or a heightened interest in competency-based approaches and alternative ways of assessing student learning. So what I'm seeing is that when you get to these really top five issues, there is a great deal of similarity of interest across the institutional types. So I think we as a community can now take that to say we need to learn from each other so that two-year schools can learn from ours and ours can learn from two-year schools because we share all these concerns and we're trying to make improvements and innovate in these areas together.